We're usually all about San Francisco and Silicon Valley in the Spark Talks podcast, but this time we're putting the spotlight on Los Angeles. <laughs> An exploding tech hub with tons of startups getting founded and big companies moving in. Today we're joined by Antonio Hicks, senior account manager who works on a lot of LA-based accounts. Hello. Hi. We also have Rachel Kahn, who is director at Spark in LA. Hi there. I'm your host, Vanessa Zucker, and Spark's marketing manager. Tweet us at Spark PR with your stories about LA startups, tech in the entertainment industry, and any questions you have. Antonio, Rachel, tell me about your relationship to LA and how you encounter tech related to the city. So, so recently I've been working with a few of tech companies down in LA, mostly in Santa Monica. I work with Inspire Energy. It's a clean tech company that's trying to bring clean energy into homes across the country. As well as just recently, we started working with Red Bull Radio, which is a part of Red Bull Music Academy. We're going to be helping them just increase their brand awareness and really talk about the different content that's going on on their radio platform, as well as some of their activities with the music festivals. Awesome. Rachel? Yeah, so I'm obviously based in LA, and I've been living here for about three years. Um, moved back after a long stint in Silicon Valley, so it's nice to be in sunny weather. Um, and yeah, I represent quite a few clients in the LA area, um, and I'm always talking to various different startups and and larger brands as well locally. It's a booming scene, um, lots of really cool companies doing amazing things here. Activision Blizzard is at the forefront of interactive entertainment. eHarmony is an amazing online dating platform based in LA, a lot of people didn't know that. There's also a huge booming scene um, in our neighboring county, Orange County. If you think about kind of the Irvine area, um, tons of startups opening up shop there, such as Auto Gravity, which does a lot in the fintech space for auto financing. So yeah, cool stuff happening across the board. Great to hear. And I have a personal little spot in my heart for this podcast because I was born in LA, <laughs> in Arcadia, and I'm kind of a little bit of the opposite of you, Rachel. I lived in LA for about four years after college and then decided to move to Silicon Valley. Wow, I love that. Okay, let me dispel a myth that I've seen online in several articles, that there was essentially no tech in LA until very recently. I wanna mention a few historical events that will lead us to the big stuff happening today. Sky Dayton, who founded the early internet provider Earthlink, began building the physical infrastructure of the internet back in the 1990s in LA. In the mid-90s, Bill Gross recruited entrepreneurs to build startups in his incubator called Idea Lab, which was located in Pasadena. And MySpace, remember that? was launched in LA in 2003, a little bit more recently, with the change from traditional entertainment to user-generated content. Digital studios started popping up all over LA. For example, Amazon Studios was founded in 2010 to develop TV shows and movies. YouTube opened a studio in 2013 with equipment and mentoring for its creators. And, uh, What's happening now, you guys? Oh my gosh, the LA scene is blowing up and it's so exciting. I mean, obviously, some of the biggest players in tech are really establishing themselves in the LA area. Um, Google is going to be moving into this huge, amazing space in Playa Vista. So it's kind of, a, you know, the expansion of the Silicon Beach area, which most people think of today as just the Venice area. I think a lot of really interesting things are also happening outside of just the Silicon Beach area. So for example, there's tons of development currently going on in the San Fernando Valley. In the Woodland Hills area, there's a, a plan to build out this area called the Warner Center. And they've said that it's going to become the downtown area for the San Fernando Valley. So I, I think we're going to see a lot of really cool companies start flocking this way where real estate's a little bit cheaper. And what's even ra more random is that um, there's this really awesome restaurant called Itza where you don't even need to order anything from 
a human. It's all just, you go in, you order from a tablet and you get your food out of a box in like three seconds. It's amazing. And, you know, of course they started in Silicon Valley and their second location is right there uh, next to Warner Center. So that's so funny, Rachel. I had no idea that they were down in LA and I probably go there with colleagues about three times a week. (laughs) Love Itza. (laughs) Yeah, we call that the most Bay Area restaurant we've ever seen, but I guess that can no longer stand. And I, I know Rachel touched on it a little bit, but, um, and I mentioned that a lot of our clients are in Santa Monica, and I've been reading a lot of innovative companies are moving down to Santa Monica. There's uh, Task Us, um, Patient Pop, and Dog Vacay, which is creating a marketplace for pet owners, which is really cute and very LA. <laughs> very LA. <laughs> but, um, I know I enjoy going and down in Santa Monica. Who doesn't like an office on the beach? So I can definitely see that's becoming a great hotbed for new innovation tech companies. Totally. And obviously, you know, there's lots of cool stuff happening that's very sexy for the media right now. Um, Elon Musk's SpaceX is in the LA area. Snapchat, as everyone knows, is in the LA area. And, you know, I think it's going to, to breed a whole new wave of startups off their back. So I think that's going to be really fun to watch. Yeah, I couldn't believe on this website called represent.la, they have a map of startups, co-working spaces, investors, and more, and they list 1,145 startups. I believe it. I really do. And I think, you know, what's really helping startups truly bloom now is is WeWork and and other co-working spaces like them. I think they have, I want to say like a 13 different locations right now across the LA area. You know, so I think when they kind of eliminate the fear of having to work out of a garage and hack in your parents' <laughs> basements, you know, I think it, it really helps to legitimize companies and you're seeing a lot of brands come flock to those kind of co-working spaces. WeWork is just, you know, one of them, but you know, definitely one of my favorites. Hey, Rachel, I have a question. With the Snapchat and the Snap IPO, how was the energy in LA when that was happening? Did you feel something different that was going on there? I mean, certainly, you know, when you're hobnobbing with the tech community, sure, of course, people are really excited about it. Um, I think what's interesting is I remember when Facebook first IPO'd, um, there was a lot of focus on all of the companies that were kind of building themselves on their back. So a lot of social media management companies were popping up and as, as best technologies to help you manage your social presence on the platform. You saw other companies come in, um, such as Pavement, who was focused on helping early shopping on the social graph. Um, and, you know, tons and tons of different startups are built were built on their back and it, it created its own ecosystem. And so I think, you know, we're probably going to see a very similar wave here with Snapchat, you know, from social media management to interesting ways to use that technology for commerce? Um, How are big brands really going to play with Snapchat? So, I mean, definitely starting there, but there's so much more potential in the future. All right. But here's my question. Why LA? The sun. (laughs) (laughs) Exactly. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So how does LA differ from San Francisco or Silicon Valley or even New York? It's so different in terms of just overall culture here. I mean, I think a lot of people traditionally come to LA or or what the stereotype is, is to be part of the entertainment scene, um, to, to tap into Hollywood. There's so many up and coming actors here. And, um, there's a lot of creativity that's bred out of that. And I think it lends itself to be an environment where people are willing to try things and have untraditional roles. And that really serves well for the startup community. The sun, again, huge. I think people are sick of the fog, Carl the Fog of the Bay Area. At least I'm still sick of him. And, you know, I think though the real estate market is not cheap here, it's cheaper than the Bay Area. And that's a draw. For sure. Um, You know, I lived in New York and Seattle and now San Francisco. And I think definitely after visiting a couple of times, you know, to L.A., visiting friends in L.A., seeing what they seem to have a better lifestyle just by being there. I think a lot of young people and maybe families seem to have a better chance of surviving by moving there. Um, that's definitely be a key for companies having talent. You know, it's got to be easy 
hey, want to move to LA? Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's got to be really easy to get talent there. So I think you're going to see a lot of big troves of talent moving to LA uh, for these companies because they have a better lifestyle. Yeah, what I read on Bet's recruiting is that there's an oversaturation in Silicon Valley of talent, like engineers, which leads to too much competition for jobs. Mm, yeah, that makes sense. The other thing I think that's going to be interesting to see how this shakes out is Obviously, with Silicon Valley, Sand Hill Road, which is, you know, the road of all things VC, is in their backyard. And so it's really easy for startups to get access to capital in that, you know, they can be just out and about on the town in San Francisco or out in Silicon Valley. And, you know, if you're in the tech community, there's bound to be somebody from some VC at some of your dinner parties or bars or wherever you're hanging. It's just the the direct line to building those relationships and forming VC partnerships isn't in LA. So I think it's going to be, sure, there's a couple VCs here, but I think it's going to be interesting to see what happens on that front if, if you know, some of these bigger VCs end up opening shop in LA because they start seeing this rise of startups. So that's going to be fun. Obviously, there's always the crowdfunding model, which is, is become hotter and hotter. But to, to gain traditional capital and try to get Series A, Series B, they need those VCs. I think there'll be opportunity for VCs to come here and start investing strategically in the LA area. Yeah, I was going to bring this up as a um one of the challenges that I saw, there's an article in TechCo. Uh, they interview Pedram Sameni, founder and CEO of Patexia, who says securing financial capital can be difficult. Uh, the quote is, two remaining challenges are engineering talents and financial capital. It has got somewhat easier to find talents partially due to high cost of living in this SF Bay area, as many have been moving down. But the VC and access to smart money is still very tough. A lot of local VCs still follow the, in the footsteps of Silicon Valley and wait for a lead investor from the Bay before they jump in. I wonder, um, here in SF, there are a lot of uh, athletes that are playing for Golden State Warriors that are now investing in tech companies. I wonder if celebrities that are down in LA are going to see this and started grabbing hold to investing in different companies and startups there. Yeah. It'd be a really interesting, you know, chain of events if that starts to happen. Totally. I mean, I think Ashton Kutcher has already been known to be a big investor in tech. Um, so I think, you know, he's he's starting to that conversation. Um, obviously, Jessica Alba's Honest Company is in LA. So I think there's going to be, I think it, there's a lot of potential for that to, to come to fruition for sure. Rachel, you mentioned another challenge to me in another conversation we had, something about a physical barrier of everything being so spread out. Yeah, I mean, I think that's just the truth about LA. It, the greater Los Angeles area is gigantic. I mean, even if it's not that spread out, the sheer traffic on the 405 to get from point A to point B is a nightmare. Oh, don't get me started that one. <laughs> you can't have a podcast without talking about the 405 if it's, uh, <laughs> but it's true. I think that's going to be kind of a, a challenge. You know, you can have, you know, so many people in the Silicon Beach area, but a lot of talent is going to be all over the place, especially people that are wanting to start families and buy homes and, you know, live in just unique places. It's going to be hard in the LA area to have like a true city feel to, for a tech community, I think, because again, just the talent is so dispersed. I, I don't know, it'd be interesting to see what happens. I mean, I think with remote working becoming more popular, I could see more and more companies in LA having more flexible working schedules where maybe people have to commute in two to three days a week, but then can work from home for the other remaining parts of the week. Um, so that could be a nice way to you know fill that gap. I think when I was there last time, the train is now open you know, running from downtown to Santa Monica, which I think will help ease some of that as well. Yeah, certainly. But, you know, Matt, public transit here is just not not what it needs to be. And, you know, maybe in 10 years it will be. Um, obviously, you know, with Uber and Lyft, it's definitely helping people get around more. But let's be honest, everyone has a car in L.A. <laughs> so, you know. <laughs> What they need yeah. on the 405 is the HOV lane. Can somebody wow. think of that app? <laughs> <laughs> I wonder what will happen when everyone has a self-driving car in LA. Um, accidents galore. <laughs> 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 Won't be pretty. Well, speaking of the future, 
what do you guys predict will happen? Like, do you think there will be more pure tech companies? Do you think there will be more branching out into other industries? Will LA specialize in entertainment and lifestyle startups that incorporate tech? What do you think? I know for me, I think I can definitely see how popular VR is becoming and a lot of uh, technology entertainment, a lot of content that's being created is going to be coming out of LA because there are people that know how to create good content. They're used to making movies, making good TV. So I can see how LA can become a really big uh, hub for VR and virtual reality for all types of industries, um, as well as, as you mentioned, the lifestyle and how I think a lot of fashion and fitness tech will be coming out of LA because that's what they're going to be, you know, known for. You know, how can how can I make jeans um, using the app? Or you know, LA is a denim capital of the world, so it's going to be a lot of I think interesting technology coming from that front that I can definitely see coming out of LA. And then, um, of course, as you mentioned, autonomous driving cars, just the sheer fact that people are on the road so much, I can see that maybe it may shift from San Francisco to LA um, with autonomous cars. Um, and of course, the really big one with clean energy, I can see how LA can be a leader in that developing clean tech and clean energy for the United States and the world. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I think to Antonio, your point, you know, with automotive, certainly because everyone here is armed with a vehicle and they all have to go through the car shopping process because, um, you know, they all have to buy gas unless they have a hybrid or an electric vehicle. You know, I think there's going to be a lot more disruption in the automotive space happening here and more startups along those lines. There's certainly some, um, but definitely potential. And you could, you know, maybe LA will become the next Detroit. Um, so definitely a possibility on, on that end. Um, clean tech, you know, I don't, I don't know if LA is going to be the scene where that happens because I feel like San Francisco already has so many of the larger solar companies there. And you've seen companies like Solar City move to Las Vegas and, and even like Tesla's, I think their battery factory is in Nevada now as well. So I'm not sure that, that they're going to flock to the, the LA area. Time will only tell. But agree, lifestyle brands, there's tons of on-demand apps that are coming out of the LA area, like on-demand massages. We're seeing on-demand beauty brands. And then on-demand home services, there's a cool company called Service, uh, which is based out of the LA area as well, where you can easily get a, a plumber or contractor or whatever to come to your house to do a quick repair. So I definitely believe it will expand outside of just pure entertainment let's just watch what ashton kutcher invests in and then you know grab hold of that <laughs> totally you could have him do the talk at a code conference be the next merry maker yeah. oh, that's another thing that um there's a lot of conferences that are coming to la now like tech week la is becoming more popular we have some clients that have been a part of that um rachel you may know a couple more yeah silicon beach fest there's tons of different meetups that happen here and also like two of the biggest conferences in tech right now are taking place in la or in the la area you have um code conference which happens here and also wall street journal's d live conference happens in orange county but still close enough and i forgot one big one rachel but what do you, um, we forgot to talk about esports and how i think la would be a huge Contender being a leader in esports. Hundred percent agree. Yeah, absolutely. I think there's very much potential for for esports to really for LA to really be the capital of esports. I think there's um, some big brands here that are are leading that charge, and I think it's only a matter of time. I'm just waiting for Rachel to open up the LA office so I can move down to LA. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll, I'll find a location right next door to the Eats. How about that? <laughs> nice. <laughs> All right, listeners, let me know if you are thinking about moving from the San Francisco Bay Area to L.A. Why would you decide to move there? If you're in L.A. already, in tech especially, what is the scene like there for you? Are you being successful? Are you finding all the talent you need from creative to engineering? Let us know by tweeting us at SparkPR. Thanks, Antonio and Rachel, for being on this episode. You're welcome. Thank you.